Hey everyone, Lucy here. In this video, I wanted to talk about how I passed the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam in three weeks. Before we get started, as an introduction, I'm a current university student in Sydney, Australia, and an intern at AWS. So the reason I decided to make this video is because I wanted to share my personal experience with how I prepared for the exam, what resources I used, and what I wish I did differently, so that you don't have to jump from website to website trying to figure out how to start your own cloud learning journey. Overall, the exam is 90 minutes long with 65 multiple choice questions covering a few main domains, and you can choose to take it either at home or at a local testing centre. A question I get asked a lot by people is, how much previous experience or knowledge do I need to have if I want to take this exam? As you can see here, AWS recommends having at least six months of experience with the AWS Cloud in any role and a basic understanding of IT services. With that being said though, you don't necessarily have to have an IT background or any experience with AWS. Don't let that stop you from preparing for the exam. The AWS Cloud Practitioner exam is foundational level and there are so many online courses out there that start from the very basics. The only thing you need to keep in mind though is that it may take a few more hours to understand more complex concepts if you haven't come across something similar before. It took me around 15 hours of study to gain the confidence to sit the exam and here's how my time was broken down. First, I set up an AWS account and played around with the AWS console. This is a very important first step because even though you can probably get away with not having any hands-on experience with using AWS before sitting the exam, it's really important that you interact and apply the concepts you learn and see how they're actually used. The good thing is that most of these services that I used were either free or had a free tier, so I didn't have to pay any additional charges during my learning experience. So go ahead and try launching and terminating EC2 instances uploading a photo of your pet onto S3 and creating your own VPC. The second thing that I did was go through lectures on a Udemy course. I really recommend looking into this particular course taught by an instructor called Stefan. There was around 11 hours of video content and this was where I spent most of my time studying. What I recommend doing is speeding up the theory lectures to 1.25 or 1.5 speed, but really taking your time when it comes to doing the hands-on exercises so that you can consolidate your knowledge. So I definitely prefer watching videos over reading notes and documentation, mainly because I find it to be more engaging and easier to absorb. But there are many ebooks and AWS white papers out there that are really great resources, and I've linked everything into the description below. Finally, what I did was I searched online and found a bunch of practice questions and went through as many of them as I could before the exam. This was a really effective way to identify gaps in my knowledge, and some of the practice exam websites provided really good explanations on why the answer was correct or incorrect. Before making this video, I revisited these websites and found the ones that really reflected the real exam, so definitely check it out in the description below. Even though I didn't buy any practice exams for the Cloud Practitioner certification, if I was to go back in time, I would have bought this course by Tutorials Dojo. I used their practice questions to prepare for my Solutions Architect Associate and Developer Associate certifications, and it was definitely super helpful and had very high quality explanations. My final piece of advice is to book your exam ahead of time. Sometimes when we have so many things going on with our lives, it can be really hard to prioritize doing certifications. By booking your exam for next month, even if you haven't started preparing for it, forces you to feel a sense of urgency so that you can remember to block out time for your cloud learning journey. If you're watching this and have your exam coming up, best of luck and let me know how you go. If you're considering whether or not to get AWS certified, I highly recommend looking into the AWS certification website and browsing through the different certifications to see which one is best for you. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for more videos like this where I share tips on how to pass different AWS certification exams.